see the slide on the screen. Can everybody see? Hello, is anyone there? Let me know if you can see. Doug can see. Okay, great. All right, welcome everyone. Gonna get started here today. Jim can see, good. So I, I'm going to talk today about gas. I'm going to talk about momentum. We're going to go over a few trades. But the bottom line is, for those of you that don't know what I do, I trade momentum in gaps. Okay. This is me, Melissa Armo. I appear on TV and I talk about the stock market. I talk about the economy. You'll have to forgive me here. My voice <laughs> is a little bit sketchy with the pollen in new york city we're having a lot of pollen right now and i've been spending a lot of time in central park so um you'll just have to bear with me here with my voice but if you have questions you can always email me at melissa the stock .com. you can call me at 929-3200 gap you can follow me on facebook youtube or skype and again i've been trading gosh since when did i start 2008 2008 i started trading it's just, that's like unbelievable. It's hard to believe like in six months it's gonna be 2025. You thought it was the White House press secretary? I'm assuming that's a joke. <laughs> I've never worked in politics. Never worked in politics. Have no interest in working in politics. Uh, actually, I don't have any interest in doing anything other than what I'm doing right now because I know how to do it. You know, once you learn how to do something and you enjoy it and you like it, you don't want to do anything else, you know, as long as you can make money doing it. Of course, when I started trading, I wasn't making money. I didn't know what I was doing. And then it took me about three years to figure out my system. So, you know, now that I know how to do it, I will always know how to do it. And again, that's the benefit of learning what to do in the stock market and having a system that works consistently, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But anyways, this time of the year, again, July 4th is next week. We're halfway through the year, so it's a good time to take a few days off, relax, spend time with your friends and family, and kind of take stock if you're trading. How's your year going? Are you on target for your goals this year? Or maybe you're not trading, and you wanted to start trading in January, and now, whew, half the year's gone. Again, this is how our lives go. We say, well, I'm going to get to this thing and I'm going to get to that thing. And then you never get to it. I've had some <clears throat> projects for myself I wanted to do. <clears throat> not trading things, but not work-related things, but projects around my house. I was going to organize my closet, do some things around the house. I still haven't gotten to them. And now here it is July. So you know, everybody's busy. We're always doing lots and lots of things. And we have to make time for the things that we really want to do that are important to us or we're never going to get to them. You know, it's it's just one of these things where life just seems to be going so fast. So this is a good time of the year when you can get a break, if you can get a break, to take a look at where your life's at halfway through the year. And if you're someone that's been trading, Again, one of the key things to trading success is that you need a quality system. Without a quality system, you're not going to make money. It, that's how you're gonna get the results, okay? The results come from using a good system. And today we're gonna to talk specifically about that system and we're also gonna talk about momentum. What do I mean when I say momentum? It means a big move. It could be up, it could be down. Okay, let's take a look here at Oracle. This was one of the nicest plays we had in the last two weeks. This was June 12th, okay. Stock closed here, gapped up. Okay, so then it had, what, a rally on the live day, and then it continued up. I didn't actually look at this today to see where it was. But anyways, this open here, this was an earnings day, ran 134 and change, and ran up, boom more than $10. Again, even on this particular day, 
it ran up more than six dollars so this is a big move this is a bullish move you would have wanted to be long this you could have bought the stock out right as a day trade you could have bought it as a swing trade you could have bought calls okay and it moved up so the momentum in this oracle was to the upside so if you were long it was really easy to make money no matter how you were in it swing trade day trade or option okay and again a call is a long and an option okay and any questions here let me know but think about it just think about it use your brain like again it's just common sense you can easily make money in the market if you're on the right side of the momentum now that momentum could last for several seconds several minutes several hours or several days in the case of oracle again it lasted for the entire first day and if you're in an, in an option which i was and you were patient you got a secondary move then a couple of days later which is fine which is fine when we do options we're doing the weeklies and again that is still a weekly options trade is still what i consider short term but anyways how do you make money in the market you become an expert in doing one thing for me it's trading the gap which we're going to talk about but how do I find the momentum? I find it when I find a good gap. Okay, so I, I find the good gap, of what I called golden gaps, that's a name that, that I coined my class and my strategy. If I find one and I say the momentum's going to come in. So I've become an expert in reading the momentum. And again, while I do prefer to short, if those of you are here that never heard of me, I prefer to short, I will go long too. Again, we went long Oracle, the trade was there. But the most important thing is to trade, to be successful. If you're doing this, if you've been trading, if you've been back and forth with trading, whether it's 2024, or even before this year, you need a method. You need a very well-defined method. This, 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 okay? Without a well-defined method to replicate daily, how will you have consistent results? Again, a lot of people make money doing trades that are just dumb trades with dumb luck and they can make money. You've seen many of these Reddit stocks that people are trading, they just get ideas Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Anybody can make money some of the time. That's not how you're gonna be successful. You wanna do this and have a level of consistency that you can say, well, I'm gonna replicate this and therefore I'm gonna get these results. Similar results to me or better even. I actually missed, um, missed an exit Thursday of last week and two trains that people in the room got out before I did. So, you know, sometimes people that did my system and did my method actually get better exits than I do. But it's the consistency. I'm looking for a specific set of requirements in a 26 points. It's a daily requirement. I get up and I rate the gap. And we're going to talk about what a gap is in a minute. But every point that I am looking for to replicate looking for it looking for it is on the daily chart okay if i get a 20 point rating i don't need a perfect score of 26 but if i get 20 or more than 20 then it qualifies for me to do the trade and if i don't then i don't get it then i don't do it then i don't do any trades so if you think about it if you 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 know you're wanting to do this you're like okay well i have to be consistent because if you're putting your money on the line you want to make money you can think of it like it's gambling and a lot of people just lack the consistency in their trading and then they're just all over the place i mean they're literally all over the place and then the results are all over the place sometimes they're winning sometimes they're losing and overall they're down and even though we're in an environment where there's most brokers have no commissions anymore it's still a waste of your money to do this and time if you're not making money if you're not successful and obviously if you're losing so when I, when I went to school, actually, I'm a philosophy major. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm a philosophy major. I've always been into critical thinking, analyzing things. And I think that really, I mean, I didn't, I didn't major in finance, which is kind of ironic. But then I started out in finance and banking once I got my first real job. But my background in philosophy, the papers I wrote, my dissertation, everything I ever did, was about critical thinking and that actually helped me a lot in developing my own method and system it's this idea if this then that it's a it's called a conditional or hypothetical proposition where i say and this is what i do every morning this is the 
critical thinking that I apply every morning to my training. If this, then this. So if I get up and I find the stock, I go through my rating process. It's a checklist. That's what you learn in my class. If I get this many things, 20 points or more, like I said, on the daily chart, then I say I'm going to get the drop if I'm shorting or the rally if I'm going long. I'm going to get the momentum and then I take the trade. Okay, so this, my background, who I am, my personality, my education actually really is a good fit for the way that I think about trading, which is, again, very unique because a lot of people want to look at things and they want to look at the fundamentals and they want to work at this thing, this thing. Bottom line is, by the time you'll even read about the Oracle earnings, Oracle is long gone, okay? It's, it's falling already after it already rallied 10, 12 points. It's too late to do the trade. The type of trading that I do, we have to take it on the day. And again, you could do an option where you can hold it for a couple of days if you want to, or you get out the same day if you want to. That's up to you. The type of way you take the trade, whether a swing trade, a day trade, or an option, that's up to you. That has to do with the type of trading you're familiar with and the type of account you have set up at the broker. Okay, so I do both day trades and options. I like them both. Anyways, the whole, again, philosophy of my system is to determine who's in control. Because if you say, well, the bears are in control, then the market's going to sell off, for example. If you say, no, 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 the bulls are in control, and the market's probably going to continue up and make new highs, okay? So again, the idea is to read the control, see what's happening with the control, and that will be able to help you make money. Okay, because if you're on the right side of the control, it should be very easy for you to make money, no matter how you do the trade. So again, in reference to Oracle, here's Oracle, stock closed here, gapped up. Who is in control of Oracle? The bulls. The bulls are in control. Okay, stock's getting bought. It's moving up. The price is moving higher. Again, sometimes you have bad earnings and the stock price moves up. Sometimes you have good earnings and the stock price falls. So you really can't even tell that sometimes with the fundamentals. All right. Here was another one we did a bunch of times. Disney, this is a daily chart of Disney. Disney closed here, gap down. Price closed before the earnings at around 117 and change. Open in the morning around 107 and change. Open, sold off, fell. Who's in control of Disney? The bears. Okay, stock price has been falling, falling, falling. Even today, the stock price is down. Okay. So again, you look at this chart, you say, who's in control here? The bears. The bears are in control of Disney. But again, how do I figure out this control? I find the gap, I look at the gap. So what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. Okay. Very simple. Almost everything gaps almost every single day, including the market. When I say the market, I mean... Any market ETF, the QQQs, the SPY, the diamonds, if you want to look at the DIA. But a gap is a break in price action from one day to the next because you always have a 4 o'clock close of the stock market and a 9.30 open. So tomorrow morning the stock market will open at 9.30 and it closed at 4 today. So there will be gaps tomorrow. I don't know what will gap until I see the gap, but I know there will be gaps. So here's an example of a bullish gap. This is a chart of Tesla. Stock closed here, gapped up. Stock closed here around 165 at four o'clock Eastern time, gapped up here in the morning, almost to 190. This was the next day. This is all the way back actually in the end of April, had this move, and then it rallied. So that's an example of a bullish gap. What's a bearish gap? Let's take a look at it. Stock closed here at 4 o'clock, roughly right around 184 and change, gap down, open here around 182 and change, open, fell. So this was a gap down, okay? So you have gap ups and gap downs on almost every single chart and almost every single day, like I said, the market gaps. But not every gap is what I call predictable. Not every gap is going to be something you could trade not every gap is going to have momentum or be worth doing or something that you should even take a trade in at all. Okay. And again, any questions, plop it in the room.
and let me know. So how do I do this, like I said, with a rating system with a checklist? If you decided you wanted to come and learn how I do this, this is what I teach in the class. It's the, it's the whole thing that what I do when I'm doing the if this then that analysis, okay? Because I say, well, if, you know, going back here to Disney, if Disney rates 20 points or more here, which it did, then I say it's gonna fall and have momentum down. And it did, okay? So again, how you decide to take the trade, if you do an option, if you do a day trade in it, that's up to you. Again, similar thing here to Tesla. We actually did a bunch of trades in Tesla recently. We actually went long Tesla today. Tesla had a bullish gap today. Tesla gapped up. Tesla closed here, gapped up, rallying. We're gonna go over this trade here. We did this trade today, okay? So again, I said, oh, Tesla's getting bought. And it did get bought, okay? Actually, here it is. So we entered the trade at 185.80. An advanced trader risk of 2,000 shares is a risk of 3,800. Exit was 187.40, profit was $3,200. So this is a one minute chart. I just showed you the daily, this is a one minute. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied. We bought Tesla. This is a day trade, a trade on margin. Okay, so you would need a margin account to do this trade or you could buy a call and you would get the move up, which we did, boom, and then we got out. Now this continued, actually, this continued past where I got out of it. I think it got over 188. But anyways, this was a nice trade, a good trade. This was a long, okay? So again, you're in, you're out, boom, done. That's it. That is a day trade where I'm looking to trade it and a minimum out of it very, very quickly. And again, this is something that I'm looking to do all the time. Now, what if you took less size? You could have taken 500 shares of Tesla. You would have made $800. That's a good trade. Again, you're getting in and out in literally less than 10 minutes. So when I say day trade, it means you would have to have a margin account to do this trade at a prop firm or a retail broker. So you would need the buying power to take the trade. I'm calling the entry in the room, the stop and the exit, if you wanna do it with me, okay? Now, if you wanna buy a call in it, then you could buy the call, if you don't wanna do the day trade on margin, you could just buy a call where I'm doing the day trade, if you want to do that. That's another option for you. But again, how did I even know Tesla was gonna bop up like that? because I am determining the control of what's happening in it, which the bulls are buying that. And they did buy it today. So again, the rating system helps me determine who's in control because it makes it a lot, a lot easier to make money if you know who's in control. Again, tra trading all of it for people who don't have insider information, which none of us do. We don't read research reports. We don't know the earnings ahead of time. We don't know what Elon Musk is gonna say on the Tesla earnings call. We don't know any of that. We know what we see right in front of us, which is the price action, which is called technical analysis. When I'm looking at a daily chart, that I see, okay? That's all I see, that's all you see, and we have the same information. So that information though is actually very valuable and very helpful, and that's how I determine who's in control. So thank God we have that information. Again, what you'd learn from me is the 26 points to determine how I'm making the picks. Again, it's an if this, then that, type of thought process that's going through my mind with them making the decisions. Because again, if I'm looking to take a train, I want it to have high odds of working. Otherwise, I don't, I don't want to do it. Because again, even though every trade you take should have consistent risk, you still want to believe that the trade's going to work. The idea of taking it with a 50-50 crapshoot is something that most people do. And again, the results reflect that. It's you, you have to believe in what you're doing and understand why it's even happening in the first place. Like, how do I know where things are gonna go before they go there? This is another good example. This was one we did back in May ACAM. This was a short stock close here, gap down, open dropped. So again, this closed up here around 101 and change, gap down here in the morning around 93 something, open fell, this was a short, okay? And again, what is a gap? Just briefly go over it. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So this stock closed at four o'clock at one price and opened lower the next day at 9.30 a.m. when the market opened at a different price. And then you could have shorted it. 
or you could have done a put. Okay. But again, how did I know? In the morning, I don't, this is like easy to say, oh, well, after the fact, no. Early in the morning, I'm seeing this. That's how I'm getting in the train right out of the gate. Like today, this thing, this is 9.30 a.m. I already was watching this. How did I know this would do anything at all to the upside? Because I was prepared before the market even opened. After the fact, it's too late. Actually, if you tried to go long here after 10 o'clock, you lost today. Okay, the market sold off, sold off today, and that dragged down. So, like, it's the idea of just like I said, it's the weighing the pros and cons, but you have to find some way to put the odds in your favor because you can't just trade, trend trade. That's not going to work. You can't say, well, I'm going to go with the market, but that's not going to work either. Sometimes things go with the market. Sometimes things don't. And then you got to get the market right, which is difficult to do. I don't get the market right every day. That's challenging. So, again, you, I'm trying to look for things that don't need the market. You know what I mean? I'm trying to look for selective stock picks that are things that I'm doing where I don't really have to worry about the market. I'm trying to put the odds in my favor as much as I possibly can. Now, here is another one just going to show you an example of what is a gap. Uh, BA, okay, this is June. Stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. So this was a gap down in BA that you could have shorted or bought a put. Boom. Again, I think this is a mid-range price point here. Um, but again, if you don't like the price point here to do this on margin, you could buy a put. And it went do, 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 and it fell. So again, the momentum here in the BA after the gap was to the downside. Now, can you buy every bullish gap and short every bearish gap? No. Here's, here's an example over here. BA gapped up. So, and you couldn't have gone long this and made money. If you did, you lost. It failed. It fell on a gap up. Okay. And again, there's another gap down that actually reversed too, and it rallied. So again, you can't short every gap down, you can't go long every gap up, but we did this on the 18th. So here was the day trade, BA. Again, you would need a margin account to take this trade. Entry was 176.49, stop was 177.20, 5,000 shares with a risk of 35.50, exit was 175.70, boom. Profit was $3,950, this was a nice trade. Again, time of the day is in the morning, See it? And we were in. Boom. Get the drop out. Now, I want to show you this one all the way down. You could have held this longer. Actually broke 174. You could have made another dollar on this. But I'm constantly, constantly, constantly looking at the fast trade, the quick trade, exactly what I'm doing. As much as I can do it, I'm trying to focus on the fast move specifically for my day trades now if you wanted to do a smaller size you could have done 1500 shares risk of 1065 it's, it's a good trade about 1500 shares 1065 risk and you could have made over 1100 dollars. you're in and out of this in minutes just a few little minutes here okay and again options are different where you pay the cost of the option two dollars three dollars whatever it is you're looking for the option to have a move where you have a return on investment, where I'm, I'm trying to get 100%. 50% is good, but options take a little bit longer to move. Okay, so if you wanted 50% or 100% in a BA like this or something, you need to hold this longer than five minutes. But if you don't want to do the trades on margin, you could buy a put, just get out. If you're up 25 cents in the option, you get out, book it. Because I'm telling you in the trading room where to get out. And, and some people do that because you can trade options and day trade gaps. You can do the same thing you can. I'm not doing my options that way, but if it makes it easier for you, if you need my direction, if you need me to tell you where to get in, get out, and you don't have any other type of account but an options account, you can do that. Any questions here on anything I just said? Any questions? Anybody understand what I'm saying, not understand what I'm saying? Or questions on gaps? Let's take a look here again at the Oracle. 
I see some familiar faces here, some people have been following me for a while, and then I see some new people. So I, again, I can't read your mind. I don't know what you know, what you don't know. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different things out there that you can trade, but so many different systems and strategies, so many different classes. Um, but they, all, they don't all work, you know. It's just like anything else where you really have to do your work and think about, like I said, use your brain. Does this make sense? Because again, if it was just that easy to put a moving average or some kind of indicator on a chart, well, nobody would lose any money. It's not that easy. You know, again, people always ask me, the 26 points, you have to learn it. You're gonna, I manually do it. Like I use my brain, I fill out a worksheet. It's, that's what I do. It's not sticking it into computer and sticking it on anything. I have to go through it. But again, it, once you learn it, it doesn't take that long to do it. It's going through the process. And, and really you're the best person to use your brain to make decisions, even more so than anything else. And people forget that. And I just, I just don't know why. Do I ever use options expiring the same day or too much decay risk? No, I don't because I don't think it makes sense. Even if I wanted to short the market on a Friday or even today, you know, which would have worked, you could have done, you could have shorted the market today. You could have bought today's expiring puts, which is basically a short. The market fell today. You could have done that. It didn't fall right out of the gate. So you already lost, if you bought puts in the market today, for example, right out of the gate, the market backed up before it fell. So I don't even know what they would have cost or what you would have paid for them. You would have still made money today. But again, you have a daily expiration of today. You would have had to be well through the strike if you were gonna hold it till you got the drag, which was later in the afternoon. I just don't think it makes a good sense to to do something that's a daily expiration. I get why people are doing that, but I think you build in the cushion of the week and yeah, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but I think it's worth it. It's too much jostling around, in my opinion. You gotta get too big of a move and it almost has to power trend the whole day, whether it's up or down. Do you know what I'm saying? And that really didn't happen today because the market backed up before it fell and then really it fell late and it jostled around. You're, you're, you're losing time every second and it's condensed in those daily expirations. So I just don't see the reason to do it. Like, I mean, again, if something costs $2 and I'm just making this up, if something costs, if a strike costs $2 for the Friday expirations and this is on the week of that you're doing the trade, then like, and, and you say, well, if you want to do it and it costs 30 cents for the daily, it's like, I mean, if you can't afford $2, I just, I'm sort of like, why are you doing it? And again, that's a big difference from doing it out like a month. So again, if I wanted to do something that was a monthly expiration four weeks out or something, well, I, I probably would pay seven for that same one that costs two. Like that's a whole different ball game. Then it's really got to go for me. Like, so I'm not doing that. So it's, it's, it's a happy medium doing the Fridays. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not too fast. It's not too tight. You don't have to be too tight. And it's not crazy expensive either, if that makes sense. It gives you just enough time to get it going. And then if we are gapping down tomorrow, you would get that extra move, which would more than benefit you and pay for the extra you paid for the Fridays, where if you have to exit the trade today, well, you don't get the overnight move. Again, you're not getting any overnight moves if you're doing the dailies. You're never gonna get that. Do you know what I'm saying? And sometimes we're in trades, I'm in trades right now, that I could make more money tomorrow morning. And you wouldn't if you did the dailies. Possible weeklies or do you buy more time with monthlies as a wiser play? No, I think the monthlies are, I think doing the most I probably do out is two weeks, and that's because, like, of the holiday. Like, if I do anything at the end of this week, 
I'm probably going to do it out for two weeks because of July 4th is next week. But, and I have no idea what they're going to cost. I didn't look at them yet. But the reality is it, that would be the only reason because of the holiday. And, I, and that doesn't even mean I'm going to still be in the trade past the holiday either. And I may not even do that. I may say, oh, I don't want to do this. I may not even do that. So you know what I mean? Because again, I, I, it's better to get the move in the time. Like if it takes that long to go, how good is it? If it, if you need it, if you if it takes a month to go, you're basically swing trading it. It's like that is not the momentum isn't there or something screwed it up, like the market, or the sector, or news, or the Fed. I'm sharp like Catwoman. Is Catwoman sharp? I haven't seen that movie in so long. I have to see if it's on cable. Um, all right, so here's the Oracle. Anyways, we did this. This was a good trade. I called it late, June 12th. I called the 140s that expired last Friday. So June 12th was here. And I called this late because I saw it was going to go to 140. It did. But, I mean, if you did this trade at 230 and got out, yeah, you made money. But the trade, really, the move was getting the push up here, exiting here on the rally up or here over the 145 number. So, again, it expired Friday. You had to wait a little bit, but you, actually you could have got it out of it here. You could have got out of it here if you didn't want to hold it. But the payout was here or here. Again, either way, would have, would have, whatever would have worked for you. But anyways, the cost was, I thought, pretty good. $2, an advanced trader risk of 40 contracts. Risk was 8,000, sold at five, profit was $12,000. Return on investment was 150%. This is getting that secondary push up, holding it that couple of days, okay? And if you bought, five contracts risk a thousand profit was 1500 again this is a good trade this is a good trade you could have done this with five thousand dollars in, in an options account in a cash account in a non-margin account because you can trade options again in a non-margin account you can set it up as a cash account and you buy it and you wait again i would have loved this to go boo right away but it didn't but i rated the gap here and instead of 100 percent conviction and you stay with the trade, okay? And that worked. So again, we're buying puts and selling puts. We're buying calls and selling calls. We're getting in and out that way. It's still the momentum play, but it's a different way to do it. If you don't have a margin account, it's a way to trade because again, margin accounts, accounts have different requirements, okay? Any other questions here? Anyways, it's the American dream to become rich. But do you have a plan to make it happen? And now we have all these people, all these uh, illegal illegals in the country. Well, their dream is, some of them anyway, is to get rich too. So you have all these people in the world, different backgrounds, different countries, different skill sets, okay? Different educational levels, different, different economic levels too. What do you even, what is rich to you? You know, everybody even has a different amount of money in their head of what they think rich is. I guarantee you that what I think is rich is completely different than every person here. And I guarantee you that what any one of you would say is probably different than any what everyone would say that's here. So everybody, depending on your background, your upbringing, your education, where you live right now, and again, all of these things, everybody has a different idea. But either way, whatever your goal is, whatever your idea of wealth and being able to be wealthy and rich is, it has to do with having a plan of action to make it happen or you're not going to make it happen. The one thing that I think we could all agree upon, though, however, is that having financial freedom and being rich or wealthy, whatever you, you consider that, means having more free time and not being a slave to some kind of boss or employer or job, you know? Again, if you're working, you know, 80 to 100 hours a week, if you're making a lot of money, if you have no time to enjoy the money that you're making, what's the point? What's the point? So again, the, the nice thing about trading for me, day trading, whether it's options or day trades, is 
the whole point that the market closes at four o'clock. Even if I sat all day in a train, which I did not do today, but even if I sat at my desk all day at six and a half hours <coughs> and I have weekends off and I don't do that, I don't do that anyways. Okay. Like I showed you in the day trades, those were trades I was in and out of very quickly in a few minutes. Anyways, all you need is one strategy, one focus, and really that's the most important thing is to have that focus. And again, like I said, mine is gaps. So again, why gaps? Gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. Gaps have large moves, like we talked about. Some are up, some are down. Gaps can move up or down, but some of the biggest momentum moves in, in a daily chart really come from a gap, and that's why I like to focus on gaps. Now, we were talking about the market. The market gap down today. So how would you have made money? You could have shorted this or bought a put. Could have shorted this as a day trade. But again, I pointed out it didn't fall right away. Stock closed here, the market closed here, gap down, open rallying, and then it broke. And again, I don't know where we're at tonight. Uh, there's really no earnings, significant earnings out tonight. So we're probably just doing whatever. And we'll see where we are tomorrow morning. Today is Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday. But again, this is a gap. Spy gap down today, too. So there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. And again, that's hedge funds, big banks, uh, individual traders. They're taking positions in stocks. They're getting out of positions in stocks. They're buying, they're selling, they're shorting. And that's what I'm looking for. What are they doing? What are they doing today? Are they are they buying Tesla today? If they are, I want to be long with those people. And again, as you think about it, making money trading is fun, but you need to use your brain. It's just the fact that people, for some reason, and again, I don't know what it is, after a certain age, I don't know if it's 35, 45, 55, 65, whatever, people don't want to learn new things you should constantly 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 be wanting to learn new things at any stage in life you will live longer if you stay sharp and you're focused and in today's day and age again there's nothing wrong with working if you want to call this work it is something i take seriously so i consider trading work there's nothing wrong with working forever basically so if you have to work for a half an hour hour a day forever trading if you enjoy it and you like it and it's fun why not you know we live in a world where it's really not feasible i don't think for people to live anymore on pensions or retirement you know my grandfather he passed away he was a pipe fitter so he was in a union big union guy so he i mean he had a huge pension i just they don't they just don't give pensions like that anymore i mean and again, he retired early. They had some kind of early retirement. He ended up retiring early. And then he kind of worked on the side and fixed up things and did odd jobs on the side for years. But that type of pension, what he was receiving monthly, it just doesn't exist anymore. So we just live in a different world in a different environment. And even people, you know, ha having money, getting money from their IRAs, people can't live on it anymore. And this is before inflation. I mean, this is like the way things cost, what things cost. This is even pre-COVID. And now, of course, we're in a high inflation period. And I, don't, I was talking about this in the trading room last week. I don't think that the costs of things that we were paying are ever going to go back to where some of those prices were. I don't think food is. Uh, rent is a question mark. Housing would have to crash for that to go back down. And that could happen theoretically. But so far, it hasn't. So far, it hasn't. So who's to say? And oil prices fluctuate all the time, but even even those have been high. So if, you, if you're thinking about doing something, you want to do something and you want to have extra money, it's worth it to think about it. It's worth it to learn something. It's worth it because you're doing it not just for now. You're doing it for yourself, for the future, for your plan of action for the future. Even if you're working full time now and you're not retired, you learn how to do this. You could do it forever. So I'm. this is something I had to do. I can do it forever. And again, I'm an early morning person. I get up early. I live in New York, so I'm Eastern time zone. Market opens at 9.30. I do my prep work early, and then I'm done in the morning, okay? If you live on the West Coast, you got to get up earlier. 
you know, depending on the time of the year. It could be two, two hours, three hours, depending where you are in the middle of the country. But it's something that you can schedule and figure out for your, for your life. But getting back to what I was saying, trading isn't gambling. It's not gambling to me. I know a lot of people think of it like that. But if you think of it like that, your results are going to reflect that. And you have to put the odds in your favor. Getting back to what I was saying, the if this, then that philosophy of my, of my major background in philosophy really has helped me put together the pieces of my checklist to be able to think it through where I believe the trade's going to work. Okay? So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I use one strategy daily to stay consistent. The 26-point golden gap rating system, this is what you learn in the class if you come to me. The rating system tells me the direction the stock's going to go, and that's how I make money. Whether you do it as a day trade, whether you do it as an option, whether you do it as a swing trade, if you want, is totally up to you. If you're comfortable with swing trades, do it. I like day trades to get in and out fast. I got into doing options, not right away, as I didn't start doing options in 2008. I got into options later couple years after the fact but I like doing options because I like the bigger moves for the cost of the position and getting the overnight moves but again you can make money doing it anyway because you're still playing the gap you're still playing the momentum and again a put is a short a call is a long and an option <laughs> and any other questions here I saw some people come in late uh, what I was saying, though, the benefit of trading gaps is you can trade fast and be done. And it's it's about putting the time that you're spending doing something. If someone could say we can make $1,000 in, in 15 minutes or $1,000 working eight hours, well, that's an easy, easy answer. Okay, so it's, I think, part of this work at home philosophy, which everyone's trying to do. People are trying to make the best of it by working smarter, not harder. Even if their employer thinks they're working eight to eight hours a day, if they can complete their job and get it done in three and a half or four, well, then they have the rest of the day to themselves to do something else or even train. So take the time that you have. When I'm looking at something, the idea of waiting for the trade to go all day doesn't really entice me. That's also why I like to trade the morning. Stocks just move faster in the morning. The market moves faster in the morning. You get most of the economic data reports in the morning. Earnings report in the morning. The Fed, all of these things happen where people are talking. Somebody from the Fed talked this morning before the open. Created a reaction in the market. But a big flow of money going a certain direction is what moves the market stocks. Creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for the institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it's not. It is. And again, the point of the checklist is to determine the directional bias if it has high odds of going in the direction of the gap. If it doesn't, you don't do it. And if it does, you do. And whether you do it as a day trade, whether you do it as an option, it's completely up to you. I told you I do both. If you're in the live trading room, I'm calling the trade live. If you're on the options newsletter, I send the newsletter out in the form of an email. But the point of the checklist is to make the right pick because there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of stocks you could trade in any single day and even that are gapping. Okay, they're not all going to rate good. Most won't. Most are not what I would call predictable in the first place. Okay, and worthless and pointless to even rate. Okay, the idea of the checklist helps you get organized and focused on doing one thing because you only, only need to do one trade a day. So I did Tesla today, I got in, got out, I was done, that's it. You, did, you didn't need to do anything else the rest of the day. And that's the whole point, to make more money, you say, well, you, then you do size. Then you do as a day trade at an option, okay? It's not trading, 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 trading until the end of time. You know, that's exhausting too, you know? Any other questions here? Or many, Benny. Again, I see some new faces. I see some familiar faces. What do you mean one contract for the 26-point checklist? I don't know what you mean. A contract is a position size. The checklist is 26 points. So I don't know what you mean. You're talking about sizing, going back to 
I don't know if you were here, Dan. I saw you sign in late. I'm recording this. I can send you the recording after I upload it. Your sizing of your risk, if you did this trade and risked $1,000 as five contracts, that has nothing to do with the rating system. The rating system that told me I wanted to go long Oracle in the first place and do this trade, this was the trade, was here, the gap. And I rated it using a 26 point method. That's what you learn in the Golden Gap course. I don't know if that answers your question. Does it? So what, why did I even do this thing and why did I go long it? Because it rated per the 26 point system. But how many you're taking here, 40 or five or 10 or one, has to do with your cash, the size of your account, and how familiar you are with my system. Did you do the class or not? Did you learn the 26 points or are you just following me taking the trades? So that, that's, a, that's something that you can discuss with me again about how familiar you are with options and the size of your account. But that's not why I'm doing it. And again, the consistency sh in, your, in your risk should monetary consistency should be there all the time. This is something I lecture about and I need to lecture about more even in the room. Because <laughs> you can't just say a thousand shares, a thousand shares, 10 contracts, 10 contracts, 10 contracts. What if 10 contracts cost you $3,000 for something? And then 10 contracts of something else might cost you 400. So it's not even about the size of the position. Like you notice when I'm doing trades, if you've ever seen any of my webinars before, if you're on the email list, I don't take 2,000 shares, 2,000 shares, 2,000 shares of everything. I have to adjust. I could have a big stop, I could have a small stop. Okay? So the money should be equal or close to equal of the risk. Okay. And I was talking about this before too. Chunking it out is a vital piece of this because again, you're trading momentum. The momentum's not going to last for the end of time. It may not even last the whole week that I have called the trade. If I call a trade and it goes the same day, you get out. Okay. If you want to hold it the next day, that's fine. But anytime you take an option, for example, if you're holding it overnight, you're up more than 100%, you're taking a chance the trade could reverse in the morning. When I'm doing a day trade, same thing. I'm not taking it in the morning and holding it till four every day. No, I take it, get the move, get out. I take it, get the move, get out. I chunk it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it out. That's how you're making money. You're making money playing the momentum because the momentum is not going to last forever. And it's very wiggly jiggly. This is what people get annoyed with about day trading or options or any of these things. Again, they get annoyed with it with options because of the time value, the decay. They get annoyed with day trades because they're like, oh, this is a machine and it's woo. No, that's reality. There are machines in the market. Things are move around. Things are wiggly jiggly. Things are volatile. But that's why you get in at the right place, at the right time, the right pick, the right gap, the right gap reading, just to get that move perfectly, poo, and you get out. And again, I'm just going to go back to the Tesla because this was a beautiful call today. Let's go back here. The heck did I have that? This is like, this is it. This was, there was nothing else to do with this. Like, we got it. And again, I didn't get out at the high. But we were in and got the rally and got out and then it kept going. But this was it. This was it, that poof, and we got it. You're in, you're out, done, boom. That was it. And if you didn't have the preparation, if you didn't have it to watch, if you weren't ready to go, like Tessa, 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 you didn't get in in time, you didn't get in, you didn't get out, you didn't get it, you didn't make any money, you know, what would you have done, short this? No, you wouldn't have shorted this. You wouldn't have even, why would you have shorted this? This fell later in the day because of the market, which you may or may not have been able to predict would even do what it did today. And you wouldn't have gotten the same entry we did. So again, you would have been waiting all day too. It's, this is five minutes in and out and done. Perfect timing, perfect entry, out. And again, I don't always get the high of the day exit and longs. So I don't always get the low of the day exit and shorts. I do the best I can. I, I do the best I can. It's, 
I do get the right picks and the right entries, though, and that is extremely important. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you have to chunk it out because your goal is to make money, whether it's $500 a day, $1,000 a day, whatever. Your goal is to make money. You got to have the focus. So how do I know ahead of time where stock will go? Well, I don't until I see the gap, but then I see it and then I rate it. And again, this is what you come learn from me in the class. I use a 26-point checklist. It tells you what to trade and what to look for each day. If the value of the information is in the system and learning it, it's a quality system. This is why I'm successful and why I've also had a business for so many years. So again, it's understanding what's going on so that you can take the information and use it to make money, which is what you want to do, okay? But the key to getting big trades is momentum. So when I trade, I'm looking for momentum, always. This gives me an edge, and it will give you an edge if you learn it too. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position of stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. That's all you need. And again, it doesn't have to last 10 hours. It can be 10 minutes. These enormous moves happen in one direction, happen very fast, which I think is a good thing. And momentum trading can be very profitable. Again, if someone said to you, do you want to make $2,000 in five minutes or $2,000 for six hours? You'd say five minutes. Anybody would. But you have to know what to look for. <laughs> and, the, and the shorter amount of time, the less amount of time, the faster you're in and out of a trade and make the money, the less you are at risk of conditions of things screwing up your trades. Like, again, things that could happen later in the day that somebody could say something, news, whatever. But anyways, getting back to the gap, what creates the momentum in the gap? It's institutional money. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are nothing gaps. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. That's the ones I'm looking for. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market, though, will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's, that's what you really want. That's how you know when the power of money will flow uh, to pay you. Okay, and that's, that's, again, we're looking for the footprints of institutional money. Could be bullish gaps, could be bearish gaps. I do focus, though, to be honest with you, on the shorts because I find that stocks fall faster than they rally. So the Golden Gap 26-point rating system pinpoints the footprints of institutional money, and this is what you learn from me. Now, what if you never did this in your life? You don't even know anything, never read a chart? You will learn the basics of chart reading from me in the class. I do go over that the first day at the, be at the beginning. And if you're a beginner person, you're just going to start slow and take small size until you learn how to do it. But that's the benefit of being in the live room. That's the benefit of getting my trade calls live because you should be able to mimic them with me. But I would do small size if you're brand, brand new. And if you never traded before, because you're going to learn it and then you process it in the class and then you ask questions and then you show up for the room and you do it. This was another one we did. This was BA. When did I do this? 613, we did the 180 BA puts. Oh, here. So again, stack close here, gap down, open, dropped. Boom. So again, take a look where it was, and it dropped and fell. This was last week. It was a nice trade. $2.50 for one contract. And an advanced trader risk. Of 8750, you could have made 180%, 15,750. What if you did four contracts? You could have made $1,800. This is a nice trade. This is a nice trade. Again, sometimes things go right away. Sometimes things take a couple days, but I don't think a week is that long, you know, in general. But if something gets a big move in one day, I mean, I will get out. It's just, it's, it's finding the momentum. It's, it's seen it. Again, it's not always as easy as people think as far as going with the direction of the gap or the opposite. Some people do the opposite and think that works. It just doesn't. Gap fills don't work consistently. Sometimes things do what you could term a gap fill, but it's not where consistently make money to train something. So there's very, very specific things that I'm looking for. And again, that's in the class. That's the whole point of going through the rating system and going through it. Now, again, I was starting to talk about this. Why do I prefer to short? Why do I short more than I ever go long? Because I just find that stocks fall faster. And when you think about it again, it's common sense. Using your brain, 
Stocks fall faster than they rally because of fear and panic. The fear and panic that comes in. Somebody is down in something. They're not going to hesitate whatsoever at all in selling it. And then, of course, we will short, okay? So I'm mostly, mostly shorting. So every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves on the day, which I, of course, want. Early confirmation of my bias, like I said, between 9.30 and 10, ideally get in and out. And then precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which I think if you're doing a day trade and you're risking a thousand, you're trying to make a thousand. If you're risking two thousand, you're trying to make two thousand. If you're doing an option, I think if you're risking a thousand, five hundred dollars is good. I think fifty percent is a good return on investment in an option. Personally, I'm trying to get trades to a hundred percent. Sometimes things go more than that, like Oracle, but I don't know. I don't know. I take it, and if it if it goes right away though and has the push, I have no issue getting out of it to make the money to have the fast exit, like I said, to, to chunk it out. But it's the checklist. Again, the if this, then that. If I get this, then this will happen, which is the 26 points. So the 26 point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time, which stock will have the move of the day with volatility to trade, which is a good thing. Volatility is your friend. Don't look at it like it's your enemy. <laughs> There's no escaping it anyways. Okay. That's, that's like saying, you know, people complain about algorithms, but that's part of the market. That bothers you. You're going to have a hard time trading. And the market isn't against you. No one's against you. Nobody even knows you exist when you take a trade in position. The stocks we're trading have millions and millions and millions of shares. No one knows when we get in and no one knows when we get out. There's no one's against you. This, this idea, this philosophy that traders now have this mentality it's, they're hurting themselves, actually, because they're not thinking positive about the fact that they could even do it. You can do it. You just got to do the right things for the right reasons, I should say. So having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision. And again, having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. Very important. A checklist is a plan of action, and everyone that puts money in the market should have a plan of action and checklist. On a professional level, all high-income all high income career field specialists have checklists. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor, if you're a dentist, if you're an accountant, if you're a pilot. You have a checklist that you go over before you perform surgery or whatever. <laughs> if you don't, accidents could happen. Bad things could happen, things you don't want to happen. And unfortunately, that's what happens with many people when they trade. They don't really have a system that they're using to decide to take the trade. They're just deciding that they're going to do something without really thinking it through. And that's not going to really result in the results that you want, which is, of course, money. Do you know what I'm saying? So, again, it's the whole point of why are you going to do this and then thinking it through and then if you get the rating of 20 points or more, then you do it. Okay. Any questions? How are we doing? Everybody good? gonna say something else that I forgot excellent presentation thank you anyways don't waste time trading without getting anywhere I know I know a lot of people do that and they think they're learning something or they're getting somewhere when they're going through things but if, if you're not using a system you're not really getting anywhere with it if it doesn't work it doesn't work and it's not gonna matter how much time you spend on it I think sometimes people pay for a system it could be a cheap class or Something they do and they and they want to do it, but then it, it doesn't work. And then they, they kind of waste more time on it, lose money in the trades, and they kind of feel like they have to like prove to themselves like something like they didn't waste their money or feel guilty about doing something. If you're doing something that doesn't work, you just stop wasting time on it. And you know. You know, you know. I mean, trust yourself. That's another big thing. I think people like people make decisions, things sometimes don't work out. 
it could be a trade, it could be a class, they didn't learn anything from it, and then they second guess themselves then and everything going forward that has to do with trading in the market. You gotta stop beating yourself up about that. Just because you made one thing it didn't work out doesn't mean every decision you make after that about any trade you take or any class you take doesn't work. That's crazy. I mean, you're really working against yourself if that's your thought process. That's like saying when you fall in love with someone and you the person cheats on you or you get married, you get a divorce, or you're never going to fall in love again. You're never going to trust anyone again. You're never going to get married again. That's crazy. Life is about taking chances. We go through situations and things in life, and we go through these experiences, and we learn from these experiences. And trusting in yourself and having confidence in yourself to make good decisions for yourself is an important part of that. Once you lose that confidence in yourself, it is so hard to get it back. And I find that traders in general, making a generalization here, lack confidence in themselves. If I could make a perfume or a cologne of confidence, I would sell it, you know, by the bottle, you know, a million a day out to traders to spray all over themselves before they trade. But I can't. But the best, second best thing is just being in the trading room with me. When I say I have 100% conviction, Oracle's higher, Oracle's one, Oracle, 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 or Tessa, or whatever comes out of my mouth, and then you do the trade and you hear me talk in the room. And those are the benefits. Listening to me talk confidently about whatever trade we're going to do so that you can build the confidence yourself. And then you see it works. Anyways, the course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level, which is important. And again, that's what you're going to learn. This is a nice quote from Warren Buffett. There's one investment that supersedes all others invest in yourself. Again, it's important to invest in yourself and your life and your future and what you want to do. And education and doing a class is part of that. And you got to love what you do because you're going to do it for hours every day for a long time. It'll be a big part of your life. So ever since I moved along the park, which was, it's hard to believe, two years ago now, I, I love going in Central Park. I, I'm like a nature girl now, and I never thought I had that in me. And if I didn't have the career that I did trading, I would never have time to even go in the park. I can go in the park in the morning, I can go in the day, and go to night after I'm done. I'm, I'm, if I never, if I didn't have this as my career, I wouldn't be able to do it. Wouldn't be able to afford to live along the park, let alone have the time if I worked a job where I had to go into an office for 10 to 12 hours a day. Wouldn't have time to go in the park. I'd be exhausted by the end of the night. And that's how many people in Manhattan live. <laughs> they're taking the train. They're working every night till 7 or 8, 9 o'clock. I have friends that are attorneys. They're in the, they're, they don't get home sometimes till 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, they start at 9 a.m., but they have no energy to walk in the park. This is a nice career and a nice lifestyle because the market is only open for six and a half hours. And again, I don't trade for six and a half hours. But even if you wanted to, sit at your screen and watch every option you're in all day long. It opens at 9.30 and closes at 4. That's it. And again, you have weekends off. Okay? But like I was saying early, you got to get value out of what you're doing, what you're learning. I feel like my class has a lot of value. And, and then, you know, again, the support system of being in the room helps too. And then I, and then I help people. I talk to them on the phone. I answer the questions when they have them. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm a real person. You can pick up the phone and call me. The system I use to find the right gap each day is the Golden Gap 26-point checklist. And again, it's about empowering yourself to do it for you to take the trade and do it yourself. But I try to help you, obviously, because I want you to do well. And I understand that at the beginning, it's a learning process. But you're going to learn all the pieces of the puzzle. How to rate the gap, how to enter the trade, how to exit the trade, the target, support, resistance, and all the things of the chart that you need. It's a complete system to use to trade. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks in our professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So the next class, I do the class once a month, is July 13th and 14th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And the combo, which includes the trends course, you save $500. The trends is July 30th. You would get these two classes. The price is $79.99. And again, the class is online. Any questions, if you want to sign up, you must email me for sign up forms. Any questions from anyone about anything? How are we doing?
I don't know if Dan, do you have any more questions? I know you were emailing me questions before. Douglas, I know you've been following me for a while. Jim, I don't know if you have any questions or recognize you're new. Joseph, I know you were thinking about the class. I don't know if you're ready or if you have questions. Terry, I don't know about you. Chuck, you're new. CJ, I've seen you before. But I don't know if you have questions. And Bob, I know that you're going to do the class soon. Well, Dan, I don't know if you're just doing options, wanting to day trade. I think learning the class is important. I don't know how familiar you are with gaps. I think you said you're doing the options, or you, you are doing options now. Uh, July 13th and 14th. It's the week after, basically, July 4th week. Actually, it's with the week of earnings season. So earnings season starts. So we have July 4th, which is next week, week. And then the week after, earnings season starts. And then the, that week in the classes. So again, the earnings season, for those of you that don't know, it is a really busy time to trade. Even though it's summer, it's actually a busy time. There's many, 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 many stocks that are gapping during earnings season. So it's an active time for options, particularly. I still do one day trade, usually a day, that's it. But I might do multiple options if we have a bunch of trades, could be calls and puts during earnings season. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks that have earnings during earnings season. And so it, like the first four to six weeks of earnings season are extremely busy. So it starts right after, we start with the bank earnings, which is gonna be very significant. Again, looking at what's happening with the market, if the banks crash or rally, it's gonna affect the market. So that's the, that's the week after uh, the July 4th week, boom, we come right back from that holiday and then it's earnings season and then it goes all the way into the end of August. Oh, I thought you said you did. Oh, I, I guess you emailed about options. I guess I just thought you did them. Well, have you ever done day trades, Dan? Or you never traded at all? You were asking me about them, so I thought you did them. Or you were doing them, I thought. Again, it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a cheaper way to do a trade than do it on margin. But I like both because if I'm doing an option, I can hold it overnight and get the bigger move like in the Oracle. And if I'm doing a day trade, I can get out quick and fast. And again, Oracle is a good example because the Oracle, if you held it, it was a big move. But you had to wait like a couple of days. But we did do a day trade in Oracle too. Oh, you're day trading right now. Oh, well, there you go. Well, that's fine. Any other questions? Listen, if you're interested in the class, write this in the room, or if you have questions, you can email me here, or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Very good. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening, and I will talk to some of you later.